I'm sure I've talked about this on the show before, but one time when I was in the eighth grade, my English teacher decided that instead of worksheets about gerunds, participles, and infinitives, she was going to warn us about the dangers of Satanism. And to be clear, I went to public schools. So this was as unrelated to her remit as a burlesque show would have been. But, but, but she'd heard some terrifying stories about Satanic cults at church. And our very lives could be in danger if we didn't recognize the warning signs. I remember the story she told in detail. It was about a, a kid who joined a satanic cult and then all the other kids took him to this abandoned building and they broke his arms midway up the forearm and they folded him back until the fingers touched the inside of his elbows and then they broke the rest of his arm and then they folded all of that back and then they did the same shit to his legs and they left him in the abandoned building where ultimately he died of shock. Now, if you know your evangelical American history, you probably don't need me to tell you what year this happened would have been 1990, possibly 91, but I think 1990. It would have been the exact height of the satanic panic. And it wasn't just gullible English teachers mistaking ghost stories for fact at the time. The panickers in question included cops and prosecutors and judges. People went to jail for this kind of shit, even without evidence of victims. People's lives were ruined. They were robbed of decades because of the 90s equivalent of people thinking Facebook is going to take possession of all their photos at midnight unless they share this fucking status. I was reminded of this ugly chapter in our cultural history again this week when I learned that one of the most notorious satanic panic convictions was finally vacated. This was the case of Melvin Quinney, a, a Texas father who was accused of satanic ritual abuse by his wife during an already ugly divorce, right? So like basically the least credible possible accusation. But as soon as she said the words, Child Protective Services grabbed up the kids and they started asking them about their dad's proclivity for satanic sexual abuse. No doubt sourcing their knowledge of said abuse in the same way that Mrs. Ansel did. Well, eventually, after repeated sessions with ever more detailed questions, the kids started to remember the abuse everybody was talking about because that's how memory works. And the kids started to realize that their interlocutors were happiest when they told the most outlandish stories. So they told the most outlandish possible stories because that's how kids work. And based on those implanted bullshit memories, Melvin was arrested for indecency with a child in 1990 and convicted to 20 years in prison the following year. He was released in 1999, got off early on good behavior, but he still had to register as a sex offender over shit that never happened. And he wasn't the only victim. His, his fucking kids grew up with these memories. Hell, their mother told them that their dad's satanic cult was still after him. So they grew up pretty sure that the Satanists were going to come roll their arms and legs up any fucking minute. Now, eventually the kids grew up, they realized what had really happened, they recanted their accusations, and based on their testimony, the lack of evidence, and the abundant historical acknowledgement of this baseless moral panic, Quinny was finally exonerated and taken off the fucking sex offender registry last month. More than 30 years after the conviction. After all the things that he could have been and done were stolen from him by Christian paranoia, and he wasn't alone. You know, the, the, the most famous example of this was the case of Dan and Fran Keller, two innocent daycare operators who were convicted of child sexual assault based on similarly coerced testimony that was so fantastical it might as well have had fucking unicorns in it. They spent 21 years in prison before their conviction was finally overturned. In, in 2017, they were awarded $3.4 million from a Texas state fund for the wrongfully convicted. And I'm sure that was damn welcome, but it's not going to buy them back the half of their adult lives that they spent on this baseless fucking hysteria. Because that's the thing. Look, 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 as panicky and stupid as we now recognize our response to these paranoid rumors to have been, we've clearly learned nothing from it. The satanic panic was rebranded as QAnon and it's making a comeback, baby. And unlike the early 90s, in the reboot, people are being elected to office specifically on the platform of believing this bullshit despite the lack of evidence. We've got people trying to make whole ass laws based on the premise that there are people sacrificing babies to Satan and drinking their blood to stay young forever. And we're still not even done cleaning up the mess these motherfuckers made the last time they came to visit. <laughs>